which rows would work for my rows T. So I'm right now, um, I finally got the rose petals and the rose hips that work as per my taste and as per my choice because I'm very picky when it comes to tea or when it comes to taste. So yeah, my next blend would definitely be with rose. And uh, I really loved how you blended the licorice root and rose. Yeah, because that, that's one of my favorite flavors which my mom used to make it for me when I was a kid. Without the black leaves brewed in it, yeah, yeah. I remember this. That's actually um, that's the story of this one. My mom, uh, because she had a tea shop back when I was a kid, and when I was younger, we would like you know hang out and drink tea all the time. And there was this tea that we loved to get, and it was something like this. And then um, there was this whole thing about how Tivana ate up all of like the tea distributors when they were growing, yes. and so. Uh -huh. We couldn't get the tea anymore and so we had like a little bit left and so we went and then we like picked the whole thing apart and we like developed the blend and so this is um this is that now oh maybe maybe uh um i'll trade in some uh tea blend that your mom or you made with that rose thing because i'm still trying to blend in properly and I'm satisfied to like 80%, I would say, for my taste buds. Um, like, you know, how wine tasters would uh, taste different kind of wine. And then, so I'm kind of a tea taster. And if I'm not satisfied, I, I usually don't launch my teas by then. So, yeah, I definitely love to try your teas. Well, I'll be happy to share <laughs> some of my mom's recipes. She's, um, she shared them with me. That's what I've been sharing with the world at this point. Great, great, great. Yeah. Um, hopefully. Enjoy. Yay! <laughs> Jessica, where is she? Hello. Hey, Hi. Jessica. Oh, you look so darling. Hi. Thank you. Hi. You know what I look like. Oh. oh, so beautiful. Where are you sitting? I'm sitting in my very messy studio right now, so I cannot show you how it looks like. I get one corner of the half painted paintings out there, and one corner my henna and lighting. And this is my background, which I usually use to record my reels or, you know, like other Instagram or Facebook videos. So, yeah, this beautiful. is one of the walls. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Only you know it's messy. <laughs> We don't see anything. Yeah. Yeah, trying to hide the mess. Hot mess. <laughs> hey, it's a cool mess today. Yeah, let's see. Are you ready for this weekend? Yes, I am so ready, um, except for I have, you know, whenever um, there's my event, I usually make fresh batch of tea. I usually don't keep the same tea, you know, for like two weeks or three weeks. I usually prepare. So that is something that I will prepare on Thursday. Yeah. Meaning your little pe little pieces that you drop in the water? Those? The tea, the tea bombs? Yes, you can actually make those. And um, you can actually keep it for three months. And after that, uh, I have seen the herbs loses that kick. So I usually keep that date used within three months um, because I love it strong and I love to get the taste of the herbs. Um, Same here. But, the, mm -hmm, but the blends as well, like the turmeric or the matcha moringa, I usually make it uh, fresh and small batches, yeah. I am obsessed with matcha right now. It is so lovely. I put about a teaspoon of jasmine uh, elixir that I get from the Asian su supermarket and uh -huh. a lavender uh, simple syrup and I make uh -huh. like a matcha tea iced it's so delicious okay yeah. um but I've never had moringa but I've heard a lot of yeah, you, you need, yeah you need to try that um this weekend I will give you one and try that uh try to make it um like iced tea or maybe kind of latte yeah, yeah. 
you, you will see that difference, um, the taste. And I have tried to blend in uh, so that matcha is a little bit lower side so that people can get the taste of actual moringa into it. Otherwise, matcha would have overpowered the flavor. Okay. What flavor comes from a moringa? It usually gives a uh, earthy and horseradish kind of flavor oh, mix. Okay. Yeah, I was so not it gives expecting that. Yeah, yeah. It gives that cake. Yeah. Hi, Elazar. Jessica, how's it going? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'll quickly grab my tea. I like all those nettles in your background, though. Oh, ah! <laughs> you see where I dry everything. Yeah. In the far right corner over here. <laughs> oh, I, have, I have white sage, um, lemon balm, culinary sage, chamomile, white sage, uh, lemon balm, zuta lavina. Stinging nettle, variegated lavender, white sage, peppermint, and rosemary. All stinging. Wow. The gang's all here. Yeah, I know. We ran out of space, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. I, I'm sorry. Oren, we haven't met before. My name is Jessica. Yeah. Hey, Jessica. And yeah, it's just Oren. Oren, pleasure to meet yeah. you. I apologize. <laughs> nice. Yeah, no worries. Uh, nice meeting you as well. I'm having some like serious FOMO because my kitchen wall looks like that. Uh, yeah, oh, but I there show us show and tell. Yeah, well, so, <laughs> so I didn't. Um, I missed the updates for this, so I didn't have time to set up in my kitchen. So I'm in my office today. Oh, uh, so yeah, I was talking to Alicia. Uh, I'll. Uh, I don't want to say like be silent, but I'm like, I'm letting you guys lead. I'm going to roll with it today. Well, I wish I could be silent. I just want to be on the wall too. I got props just in case. I was like, okay, quick. Like, what can I, what's portable? <laughs> like, like, I'm like, tea pots. <laughs> I don't even have one of those. <laughs> oh, they're my favorite. They make me feel so fancy. I um, bet. I want to be fancy. I'm not a real tea cultivator. <laughs> it's for me it's about the like the ritual aspect yeah. more than yeah. anything um and and like I don't get like too far into it but that's how that's how I got into the, the like the teapot concept I'm like first of all who drinks one cup of tea at a time no no not me I, I need more, I need more than that um and as soon as you have that plus loose leaf tea oh. you have to have some kind of contraption for it um, sure and I've tried like all of them. Uh, nice. So you collect teapots. Good to know. I do. <laughs> Food for thought tea world. And that was yeah. a clay teapot too, huh? It, this is cast iron. Oh, it's a cast iron. Oh. Let's get it again. Bring it back up. Yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Uh, colored like red on it. And then, oh, yeah. it doesn't have a basket in it right now, but. Oh, I can hear it. Very cool. Yeah, I have like four of these. <laughs> in different colors sizes motifs. Nice. that's what's up they're they're easy to to excuse as like decor because you can put them on an open shelf as long as they're lined up well sure and then i'm like yeah that's why i need four of them <laughs> or five or like that's that's why i can just buy one more everything's better in cast iron anyway oh, yeah i agree so that great. I've got this thing. This is how I like to brew my tea. I'm not sure if y'all have seen this. This is the most fun because you could just put a cup under it and it opens up a valve and the tea pours out. Where did so, you get that? That's good. Um, this one, uh, I, I'm not sure where this one came from actually. I think this is just a generic one, but like this one called like a smart pot, um, like a valve defeat valve. Um, yeah. They've got generic ones now. I'll try to find a link and share it. That's what I'll do. Cool. Oh, there she is. Hey, friends. Um, I can't join live. I must not have set it up in the settings. But what we'll do is we're recording. So um, 
I will only have one screen on and upload um, at the completion of the workshop and when I get a chance. So what I'll do first, and I'll turn off my emergency lights. Um, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining. And uh, what we're gonna do is um, look forward to participants coming in and posting this so that people can watch it when they have a chance um, on our YouTube channel, which is always a really cool tool um, in case people are working, we're out and about. Um, I'm currently on on the hill, so. <laughs> but um, for you, I'm here. And what I'll do first is pull up the presentation um, that was prepared for our meeting. And it's going to be um, just a really nice um, structure for us to do the uh, the workshop with some flow. And so all I got to do is click the present, click share, and here we go. So, pause all. All right. Um, this workshop is sponsored by the Stockton Earth Day Festival Committee, and it's hosted by CHAI, um, which is a collaborative healing arts group of artists. And so um, thank you so much for joining. We are going to just share so much about tea. I'm sure everyone's going to leave learning something um, from each other and about how to improve their tea experience. Um, and so... With any chai workshop, we encourage people to ask questions um, and to leave anything in the chat. Also, uh, we're going to do our introduction, you know, really chill, laid back for about 15 minutes. And then each panelist uh, will have an opportunity to share uh, with one mic. And then we will gather again at the end um, and chat for the remaining 15 minutes. So, Without further ado, let's um, start with introductions. And I'll go first. My name's Alicia. Um, I'm a chai artist, and I um, have been volunteering with Earth Day Festival Committee for, uh, I think, three years now. But um, I'm a graduate of Pacific, and I really love what I do. Engaging my community is always something that brings me such joy in life. And I'll just pass it on to Elazar. Hi, I'm Elazar. Uh, I'm over here uh, at Hatch Workshop, which is where I spend most of my time. This is where you'll find me. But today, I'm here drinking tea, hanging out with y'all, just kind of talking about some of the things that I really love and the joyful practices around it. So with that, I'll pass it over to Manali. Hi, uh, I'm Manali. Um, I'm from India, but now I live in Stockton and I'm in love with this place. Um, I started my work as a henna artist, but my roots also belong. My family practiced Ayurveda and the benefits and art, of, and art and science of making tea. Um, that's how I'm here in the tea panel to discuss um, and to share my experience uh, with you all. I will pass on to Jessica. Hi guys. Um, my name is Jessica Bryant and I am from Stockton, kind of traveled around a little bit. My story is a little bit longer and a bit more complicated, but I will try to sum it up a bit. Originally I started making teas um, full speed ahead, if you will, because my son was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. And with that, he has a lot of inflammation and internal issues. So I wanted to educate myself and him and our, our friends and family, how we can heal his body naturally. Um, you know, the doctors were prescribing some really heavy duty medications and neither he nor I liked that at all. Um, we did utilize it for a minute, but we wanted to figure out a way that we could get him off those medications and heal his body naturally. So there came my love and my passion for herbs and growing things with organic methods. Um, 
So there it is. I started putting together different loose leaf tea blends, things that, you know, his body would appreciate, which kind of pushed into how can I take care of the rest of my community as well. Um, so it just kind of blew up over the last year or two. Um, I'm grateful to be here. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, um, Stockton Earth Day. Is it a coalition? I apologize. Um, thank you. Festival. Thank you guys so much for giving me the opportunity to, you know, pass on my little bit of information to all of you and anyone who has any information can pass it on to me because I feel like I'm a student as well still too, and will be for the rest of my life. So um, with that, I will pass it on to Oren. I apologize. You just told me. I'm sorry. No, that's perfect. Yeah. Hey, I'm Oren. I'm a second generation born and raised Stocktonian. Um, so not new to the area. I've been there for a while. I'm actually up in Sacramento at the moment. Um, uh, by day, I work in the software industry, but I'm here to talk about tea just as something I'm really passionate about. Um, nothing too special. I just, uh, as, as someone who's neurodivergent, really not a people person. Um, I learned pretty early on in life that I just needed, honestly, a coping mechanism and a way to create space for myself. Uh, so I'll probably show off these teapots again later, but I uh, already talked about how I do that with tea a little bit today. Just here to hang out. Uh, really interested to hear what uh, the rest of you guys have to say, what types of questions we come across uh, in this session. And that's my two cents. Thank Passion you. About tea. Here to contribute. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Alicia. <laughs> okay. Um, I have some slides for the individual panelists that we can um, share. And, um, but I think Elazar is next, right? Did Elazar have a chance to? Huh? Were you able to? Wait, sorry. Am I missing anyone in introductions? Okay, I don't think then so. let's go into Elzar's first. His blend contained cardamom pods, licorice root, cinnamon, coriander seeds, rose petals, and ginger. And so if you've received a kit, mind these kits are not labeled, it will be the glass bottle with the black lid that has reddish um, contents. And take it away, Elzar. Yeah, it looks like this. So the um, what you're seeing there? Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Look how pretty! It's so pretty. I really love the way this one looks. So um, I figure I'll tell the story of where this one comes <laughs> from because it's um, it's really close to my heart, and I think it's going to resonate um, with y'all as well. Uh, my mom had a tea shop when I was a kid, and so we would spend time doing the tea stuff. And uh, before bed, we would always drink um, this one chai actually that came from a distributor. And uh, it was one of our favorites. And then at some point uh, we couldn't get this blend anymore. And so there was a little bit left in the house and we were like, oh no, what are we gonna do without it? And so we took it apart on a paper towel and we looked at all the ingredients in it. And then we like, you know, basically reverse engineered it and tried to figure out the best we could and then got something and then, you know, messed with that and came to something that was, you know, even better, we thought. And so that's what this is. It's, um, you know, the product of a collaboration between uh, my mom and I when I was a kid, you know, probably mostly her, <laughs> realistically, but I was a part of it, you know, and, it, you know, it, it's very deep in my heart, like just the, the smell of this tea, you know, and the taste of it. So it's, there's something uh, that, speaks to me about the power of tea as a ritual and as a healing thing that every time I brew this tea it connects me back like all the way into that you know and all of these different experiences and the mm -hmm. smell of it is so unique and different tea blends it's they're all incredibly unique and I've come to the place now where I like to mess around on my own you know and do make my own blends and have fun and it's uh there's that next level that um I think some of the other panelists here will be able to speak a lot more to, which are like the, the specific healing properties that come along with the herbs and how that can really be maximized to, um, you know, I think sew the whole thing together. For me, it's much more of just like, oh, I really like the tea and this one has such a fun flavor. Um, 
when I feel sick, I'll do um, aniseed and ginger and lemongrass. That's like my knock the sickness out blend. But beyond that, uh, for me, tea is really just something, you know, in the evenings to sort of recenter myself, you know, something to share. Uh, the ritual of people coming over or going to somebody's home and having a cup of tea. It's really, it's a powerful thing, um, especially on an international level. It's uh, having traveled around a little bit. It's like, makes you feel so back at home to have a cup of tea somewhere that feels so unfamiliar. Um, yes, I see a question here. Anise, is that the star? Yeah, um, um, anise comes from the big stars, but it's got a bunch of little tiny seeds all up in there. So if you break those stars open, you'll get tinier, smaller seeds. Um, and interestingly, actually there's a, the same conversation happens with cardamom where uh, what I've put in, what we have in this blend is cardamom pods. Um, but the cardamom pods have the cardamom seeds in there. So sometimes, and you see I qualified here because some blends are gonna use cardamom seeds, but you'll wanna be really careful. The ratios are much different. The seeds are much more concentrated. So if you do by weight, <laughs> you're gonna have a very different experience. Um, and then they also have cardamom powder. I'm a big fan of cardamom powder in my cooking. Um, I'll actually put cardamom powder in my coffee also. Um, so just, I guess one of, the, one of the last things that I'll speak to is the connection that all of this has to cooking, where um, you know if you take this tea basically and you ground it up really fine, this would make a really good you know, blend for maybe like a rice or something or like a chickpea mm -hmm. dish. You know, it's kind of hangs out. It's, um, it's a Persian inspired blend. So, you know, it's, uh, once you start to play with flavors, I think it's um, the possibilities are endless. Yeah, cinnamon and uh, cardamom in particular, I don't know if anyone's tried it, fantastic on oatmeal. Huh. Um, conveniently probably made big immediately next to where you're making tea. Um, but just, uh, yeah, Eliezer, you went, uh, savory with that, adding it to rice. Um, I add those same spices to, uh, just other sweet dishes, um, like oatmeal, or I use it anywhere that you would use like pumpkin pie spice, like sweet potatoes. Oh, or like so a I'm, love, second, love I'm seconding your recommendation. <laughs> yes. Um, this blend, I would say, um, I usually make my Jafrani Pulao and that's a kind of, uh, because I'm vegan, kind of a vegetarian biryani. So when I was seeing all the ingredients of this tea, I was like, oh, I'm going to definitely get this tea blend and I'm going to toss some of it next time when I'm making the Jafrani Pulao and try to top it up with a little bit of pineapple and a few raisins. So definitely if I'm going to do that, Elazar and Jessica and Oren and Alicia, I'm definitely going to give it to you guys to try and let me know how it turned out. That sounds amazing. <laughs> Absolutely. Sounds really good. Yeah, I'm excited. Okay, um, it looks like we're all ahead of ourselves. So we can uh, spend a little bit longer if we'd like. Um, and Elazar, if you're comfortable, you are welcome to share something more or pass it on to um, pass it on to me if you want. It's up to you. I mean, I don't mind passing it on. There'll be more time for us all to speak together later. Perfect. Okay, so um, I am hiding, but <laughs> <laughs> um, on my screen you'll see that um, the well, I have a typo in the screen, but so my blend contains the peppermint, the green tea, holy basil, St. John's wort, herba mate, and rhodiola. And so this is actually a collaboration between myself and Jessica. And so I went over to Jessica's house. I'm like, hey, let's make some cool, cool tea. And, um, and I learned a few things about the benefits of each ingredient, especially that St. John's wort it, there is a disclaimer that should be shared um, mm -hmm. and so I really appreciate that it was brought to my attention and then maybe um, if anyone wants to chime in on that in particular but you know some teas they may interact with prescription medication and so it's always best to consult with your doctor or pharmacist you know just to make sure that you're okay being that they can reduce the effects of um, 
what prescribed drug you're taking. So you may not want to, you know, have St. John's wort if, for example, you're taking antidepressants because it will uh, reduce the effectiveness of the antidepressants. So disclaimer over. <laughs> and now getting back to that, um, in the tea kit, this one is in the uh, painted tubes. I believe one of the kits, um, I didn't have enough. And so I included some of the samples um, that Manali had pri provided to me previously. So that one lucky duck has got some tea from Manali. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and this is a really nice blend. And I think Jessica can speak to um, just the, the general benefit of this blend because I'm learning and Jessica's teaching me and I just absolutely mm -hmm. adore everything that um, corn poppy is doing and introducing people into tea so a lot of credit goes to my friends um, for encouraging me and teaching me along the way and so that's what I'd like to do at some point is really uh, build like this good rapport and self-education over healthy um, I would say traditions you know things that we can do for ourselves and with others and to share um, and just be very mindful and commit to these practices for the betterment of our of our physical and um, holistic selves. Like I'm on my camping trip, right? I'm coming home today. But let me tell you, half of the liquid I drank out here was my tea. Um, and I felt very energized. I felt good. I know that I'm not, you know, drinking sodas. I'm not drinking all these other beverages that may not be so healthy for me. And let me tell you, I was spelunking in all the caves and feeling tired was obviously you know in the moment but each evening i would close with drinking my tea eating my um backpackers uh freeze-dried food and you know getting ready for the for the night and really enjoying um this escape but i think we can do that each time we pour a cup you know slow down recognize what we're smelling what we're tasting and just how everything is harmonious um and so that's what i really enjoy about the tea experience and just pursuing that as a student because i think there's so much to learn um and so i hope you guys enjoy my blend and what i'll do is pass it on over to the next person and that will be jessica Hi, <clears throat> I feel like your tea is sunshine in a bottle. <laughs> You're right. St. John's wort needs to be taken with care. Um, I forget when you, who you told me, called you and said, you know, be very careful with St. John's wort. And um, whoever that person is, is absolutely right. Um, I just want to tap in on that a little bit. A girlfriend of mine was telling me that she struggles with depression and has struggled with depression for many, many years since she was a young girl. And her family had her on some uh, anti antidepressants from her doctor. And she ultimately started going down a path of leading more a life of health and you know being mindful of what she put into her body not just the food and the drink but also the medications as well so she winged herself off of her prescription with the help of her doctor of course and then started taking St. John's wort on a regular basis and she sings St. John's wort's praise immensely and um, she's one of the person that I really enjoy speaking to because she really lived it breathed it and she knows so much about it um I, I grow St. John's wort and I didn't know what I was getting myself into I have a 50 foot row of it with three drip line down and I planted maybe uh 50 of them and St. John's wort is really beautiful because wherever you plant it it just takes over and it grows just grows 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 you know taller and taller and taller and then equally wide and it 
the the foliage and the leaves are so dainty and so beautiful, so light and airy. Um, I brought a bunch of it home and it's drying on my porch. I wish that I was more prepared and had it here, um, but I'm not. I'm always late to the party. So um, the running joke is that I'm a pretend farmer. <laughs> uh, one day I'll be okay. One day I'll be a real farmer. <laughs> um, but I love St. John's wort. Um, it is sunshine to me. And then mixed with rhodiola. I don't know if you mentioned that, but that also is in your blend. You put the two together along with Tulsi or um, holy basil, you know, also known as holy basil. Those three together are a force to be reckoned with. Um, you, by taking it on a daily basis, your body, your mind will all become one and you'll be like the sun, you know, you'll be super happy. Um, not like fake happy or anything like that, but you'll feel positive. You know, I think maybe you'll educate yourself a little bit more on what you're putting in your body. And that then is the reason to becoming more positive, um, feeling good about yourself, walking through the day, talking, interacting with others, um, Anyways, that's just my two cents on those three herbs. My blend that I'm going to talk about today is also a lovely little story is stinging nettle, red raspberry leaf, and rose hips. And um, so I have an acre for those of you who have not been on my property. And it is overrun by my best friend, stinging nettle, um, the first year it was, it sprouted up everywhere and anywhere. And I like to wear little to none clothing because it's so hot and I'm just a little hippie, you know, I'll be barefoot. And whenever any bit of my skin comes in contact with stinging nettle, it would break out in hives. So I really hated it. I hated it. It was like my arch nemesis. I hated it so much. I would come home full of welts, full of hives um, and I just was so frustrated and I would tear it all out. I would, I never saved any of it. Then I started to realize that it's not going anywhere. It's only getting worse. It's only spreading. And I had to really become friends with it and figure out a way to maximize the space that I have and utilize what I have growing because literally every single thing that sprouts out of the earth has a benefit. There's a reason for it. So I wanted to figure out a way that I could become friends with it. So stinging nettle is one of the most nutrient rich, dense plant there is on earth. It's full of iron, magnesium, fiber, um, it, full of antioxidants. I mean, it is a beautiful, beautiful herb, but you must be careful with it. And she reminds you of it. She's, you know, um, she lets you know, I wish that I could be a little bit like that, but, um, you mean like spicy? <laughs> yeah, because it has little hairs on it and those hairs have an oil to it and it, it, it helps with allergies. So it's an antihistamine. It's, high in antihistamine. So anyone who struggles with seasonal allergies, I would recommend having this tea every single day. And then you start to build up a tolerance with it. So, you know, it'll diminish the severity of your allergic reaction to your seasons. Um, and then you blend that with rose hips, which is high in vitamin C, um, super tart, little tangy, little berry that comes from the rose bush. It, the, the two together, I mean, that's why I call it multivitamin. Um, and then you mix it with the red raspberry leaf. And that I did for women because that has a long history of soothing our wounds and our uterus. And I apologize for all my male viewers right now, but I'm going to take it there. Um, you know, every month we women, we menstruate and red raspberry literally grabs your menstruation out of your womb and sucks it out of you. And it is known to decrease the hemorrhaging. So if those, those women that struggle with heavy menstruation, this will help to decrease that. And if you start to take it on a regular basis, you know, every day, a cup every day or every couple of days, definitely many, many cups during the week. Um, I 
I have no statistics on it, but I really believe that it will help you. Um, my menstruation is really light, super light, and I drink this every single day. And it's like clockwork. My body is very healthy, and it tells me that every month when I have my menstruation. So um, I think it's worth noting that this tea is also beneficial for male and female. Yes, the red raspberry helps predominantly women, um, but men can drink it too. I have a number of men that come back every month for it because it's high in detoxifying. So it also flushes your system out. So um, for those of you who do take medications, um, you, you all know that medications really constipate us. So the red raspberry will get into your body and cleanse your body out on a regular basis. It's high in magnesium as well. Um, I wrote some notes. There was a story about red raspberry. Oh, no, not raspberry. Sorry. I digress. Anyways, um, it's really lovely tea when you mix the three together. Um, the nutrients that you get from the nettle and the rose hips, it, you can't beat it. You're, you're really, for, you know, it doesn't matter what you eat every day, those health conscious people you're always going to be missing something. And so this little cup of tea helps you to, um, you know, antioxidants and build up your tolerance to clean, cleanliness and good living. Um, let's see, I have a little bit of it. This is mine so I can use my fingers, but you can barely see the rose hips in it. I grind them down in my um, coffee grinder. So they're quite small, but they're super lovely, lovely. And um, you mix the tart and the tangy with the nettle and the red raspberry leaf. I feel like it's a very earthy blend. So you maybe you want to add a little bit of a honey, some, you know, local honey to help with your allergies. And you get a big whammy of, you know, antihistamine and your seasonal allergies and clean your, your, you know, it detoxifies your liver, it detoxifies your lungs. Um, rose hips is really great for your heart. So it helps build up the strength and the immunities that your heart is beating. Um, with that, I don't want to ramble too much. Um, I can't, I don't know. I, I think that's about it for right now. It's, it's so much information. So much. I know. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I love it. Um, so, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> so, um, what, what I'd like to do to give you a, a break, we can always come back. Um, let me see if I can. Let's see. Let me take the zoom on my laptop and the phone if it So sharing the screen again. There we are. Um, so Manali, it's your turn. Hey. Um. So as in my introduction, I already told you all that. Um. I'm from India and. Um, my love with tea is not a ritual, but I think it is in my DNA. Um, we live in a joint family system. And in my culture, when somebody, a neighbor or say friends come to our home, uh, the first thing we offer them is tea. And when we say tea, it's not just a simple chai tea. Uh, we have tea for every season, for every occasion, for every person. And we are supposed to know um, about the person, about their preference. So when they would say tea, we have to go in the kitchen and we have to know the science and the art behind blending different spices and tossing them and making a perfect tea for them. All right, so this is just a little bit of background. And my grandfather, he was a doctor. He was a certified Ayurvedic doctor as well, uh, with whom I spent almost 10 years learning the art and science behind blending and brewing tea. Um, when I say brewing tea, uh, 
there are different stages and different recipes when in India we brew the tea. For example, when we make the chai tea or rose tea, um, we have we first uh, toss the spices, we roast it, and then we grind it. Uh, so that the spices releases their essential oils that are important for uh, flavoring the tea um, to give up. And we all know the signs when the essential oils come out of the spices, it needs some time to bond between themselves so that we get maximum benefit out of it. So tea is not just for flavor for us, it's, it also imparts lots of healing property. Um, when I say it, I learned it with my grandfather. So he actually passed down all his knowledge. And I was the only one in that joint family of 30 people who we, we all 30 people lived in one villa kind of place. And we had a house in a five acre land and where we grew all our herbs except for black tea, of course, which we used to get it from a different place. Um, and yes, um, our morning used to start off definitely with the chai tea without the black tea in it, uh, which we named it as Yogi Chai, uh, where we had cinnamon, cardamom, licorice root, uh, most of the ingredients that already my friend Elazar has mentioned. Um, but we also used to have turmeric and holy basil um, uh, imparted into it so that we get the flavor and the healing property and it would help us detox uh, with a detoxification. Um, and that tea we would drink only in the morning time as a kid and we were not allowed to drink caffeine until we turned to the age of 16 years. Um, and I will tell you the reason why my grandfather would not allow any girl or boy to drink caffeine till the age of 16 years. Um, in our culture, if we get caffeine at such an early age, it's going to affect the brain development as per the Ayurveda. And also it affects certain hormonal properties during puberty. So that was the reason he was strict on not getting us any caffeine tea. Um, yeah, and uh, that's how I learned how to brew tea, how to make tea. And when I came to United States, uh, I could only find few of the herbs and spices that, uh, you know, I could make the tea for different occasions or say when I get sick or when I have a fever. It was very difficult for me to get my own tea. And when then I became a mom, it got difficult and difficult uh, for me to find time to brew tea for me. Um, so then I designed tea bombs. So tea bombs are basically an instant tea where the herbs, uh, organic herbs, organic sugar are mixed and I would hand press them and I would simply toss them in water or in milk and the tea is ready in 10 seconds. Um, so that's how I got passionate about tea and I'm trying to figure out different methods how I can make tea lovers life easy uh, so that the tea lovers can enjoy the flavor uh, with the heating property of the tea. Manali, I didn't know you were, um, you were gifted all of that knowledge from your you know grandfather that's such a blessing i think that is so neat yes my grandpa um like from my mom's side and from my dad's side my maternal and my paternal both family had this knowledge and they passed on it to me um because i was one of the kid who was very keen in learning all the properties of herbs and spices um because of them, um, I was so much attached to botany that one of my major subjects was botany uh, so that I could, and the other major subject was biochemistry so that I can learn how 
botanical or herb or different properties, uh, you know, help uh, the healing property so that I could connect. When I'm talking to someone, I could connect the chemistry behind what we are eating, what we are drinking, and how that affects our body on a day-to-day -day life. And now I can see it definitely helps me when I blend my teas. I think and I read about it, uh, how the oils, how the amino acids, how um, the different bonding would would act in certain temperature and how they will affect certain bodies, uh, whether it's male or female. And that's how I blend my teas. I simply just don't go and throw all the stuff. Before blending, I actually do a lot of research. Did anyone have any um, questions or comments from Manali before we go into the panel? I had a quick question. I was uh, interested, Manali. Uh, you mentioned not being able to have caffeine until uh, you were something like 16. Um, yeah. Were all of the blends just the same and it was just the difference between adding black tea to them or not? Um, did that mean, like, did that mean your family didn't, um, like if you had guests, would you have to make two different kinds of tea if they had uh, like children with them? Like how, that seems like that would affect a lot of things. Um, so tell us more about that, I'm really interested. Yes, um, if there are kids, um, so how we would brew the tea, as I explained to you, if you are making the chai tea, uh, you know, we would first toss up all the uh, important herbs and spices, like I would bake it for maybe five minutes, and then I would like roast it in a pan, we didn't have, you know, oven in those days in India, so we would just bake it and we would grind it, and then we would keep in a different pan to boil, and once that tea is ready, we would strain it, um, the concentrate, and then we would make a different tea for all the kids. And then in that blend, we would toss the black tea in the end and we would let it brew for five minutes. We would not boil it uh, because in that way, we actually lose the property of the black tea uh, and it actually tastes bitter rather than giving the, the fermented black tea taste. And then we would strain that tea with milk or without milk, with sugar for the others and then we would present it to them yes very cool yeah i was just like i would never have thought how to to work in that situation yeah thanks for sharing thank you Aaron. where do you get your organic tea from manali i usually uh initially i was getting from few suppliers from amazon and then i realized there is a very nice place mountain herbs uh, which i know jessica also knows and um, one of my friends christine giordani she works at bonapiti she helped me with those so i started getting my organic blends from uh, them but now i think um now i know jessica and she grows so much of uh, herbs that i'm thinking of um, blending so i might start getting few of my herbs or maybe i can plant with jessica and growing few like rose or maybe like marigold or holy basil uh maybe in one of corner of in her one acre plot and let's see how it goes jessica Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. I love Mountain Rose herbs as well. I probably order from them every month. They are wonderful, super fresh. Yeah. You cannot compete with them. They are so lovely. Unless you grow it yourself, yeah. you know, in your backyard. Yeah, but 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 growing in the backyard again, you know, it, it involves a lot of work and it, it's always good to have that supplier like Martin Rose so that if there's a back order kind of stuff, you know where to rely on. Uh, so yeah, but definitely I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of collaborating with your farm and I have a few seeds of uh, holy basil and let's see how it grows in uh, yeah. your farm. Absolutely. Yeah. I planted a crop of Tulsi um, right now, my seeds are sprouted and they're still in my greenhouse. They'll probably go in the ground maybe a week or two from now. Um, uh -huh. 
So something that I want to say, I have two things um, regarding mountain rose herbs. There are a couple of things out there that I just can't grow. Well, I grow it, but I, in order to utilize it for any of our teas, you have to have so much. So like licorice yes. roots, I have three, maybe four bushes and they are baby, baby. I cannot even, I, I don't even want to look underneath the soil because they are nowhere near. They take a lot of time. Enough, yeah, big enough to utilize it. But there's licorice root, rhodiola too. Um, that's something that I just, I, I'm going to leave it to the big dogs who know what they're doing. Um, maybe <laughs> down the road after any one of us can get more established, maybe that's something to think about. But as of right now, um, I'm probably just going to stick with the cut and come again type things. Um, but yeah. I love mountain rose, but something that I did want to say, Manali, you mentioned that it was not about the art of making the tea, but I think without even knowing it, you and your family very much were creating that art because you said you had to know the person and know what their likes were and their dislikes. And then you go in the kitchen and you would, you know, roast a little bit of the herb or bake a little bit of the herb and then combine together. That is so beautiful. I did not know that about you. And wow, I call myself a little witch. I always have a, a pot on the stove, but you, my dear, you really are it. And it, you're right, it's in your DNA. Yeah. I'm a sponge. Yes. I want to soak up all your information. Yes, I, I, I definitely think now um, after this workshop, we need to plan another event kind of chai ceremony where we need to gather all the tea lovers. And uh, yeah, I already spoke about that uh, thing uh, with Elazar like two or three weeks before. I hope you remember it, Elazar. So <laughs> that's how you know you will yeah that's how you will learn how different people from different part of the world actually uh, brew their tea and the science and art behind it and yeah. uh, we would be able to share the knowledge with, with the community um i think we can set a goal right like if we get into a certain tier with covid um, what's after orange? Is it, is it yellow or is it? I don't know, but you know, it's something that it gives me hope as we can look forward to sharing space and doing something like that big. Um, yeah, yeah. As, uh, as as vaccinations roll out, um, what will happen is we'll. So right now, the directive is still even if you're vaccinated, you're we're not supposed to have like large events. Um, obviously, we're seeing events get scheduled anyway, um, and depending on the event, there's going to be exceptions, but. Um, that's probably the protocol we'd want to look out for is when, when you're allowed to have private gatherings over, you know, X number of people again, mm -hmm. um, would be the right time. Uh, cause tea drinking in a mass doesn't oh. work so great. Uh, that'd be a little hard to enjoy, <laughs> but yeah, um, I would, and I would say to just, um, touching on the earlier conversation, uh, about where to get some of these herbs and teas. Um, obviously ordering online is super accessible um, for a lot of folks, uh, especially if you're trying to stay isolated. Um, if you do like to buy local-ish, because um, the disclaimer is that these are in Sacramento, not in Stockton. Um, but there are two uh, stores I would turn you on to. One is Tea Cozy. Um, great for if you're just getting into tea, you can smell everything that they've got. Um, before buying, and then they'll actually, uh, you know, have sealed packages for you. Um, great place to just explore uh, and kind of see what's out there. Um, and then another place for the more boutique herbs uh, is the All Spicery. Um, so all one word, All Spicery um, downtown. That's where, uh, so Jessica, you touched on things like, um, St. John's wort uh, and nettle earlier. I'm also a big fan of valerian uh, root, which also comes with a disclaimer. None of these are, are scary, but they, um, and the contraindications are because herbs have healing powers, but they might be the opposite of the medication that you're on. Right. So, yeah. Um, 
so just be responsible about that. So Valerian is another one um, that I source uh, and I'm lucky enough to be able to source that locally. So just heads up uh, for anyone looking for an alternative to ordering online and shipping. If you do ever come up to Sacramento, uh, we've got two really great resources here um, for mixing your own or for just dipping your toe in the water as well. I have a question about um, cardamom because when I make the, my blends, cardamom is almost always the number one cost. And <laughs> so, you know, what would it be like to grow it? Could we grow it here in California? It's a great uh, question. Um, I don't know about in California for sure uh, because I think cardamom needs a certain humidity and uh, the pots to get the seed uh, nice and juicy um, because in India I have lived in different parts um, and when I grew cardamom in the southern part where it's usually hot and uh, humid I used to get a very nice juicy pot um, even when we have to dry we need certain temperature uh, versus when I grew it when I was in central India, I had the plant, but the pods were not with that healthy seed. And uh, th that's what I have experienced. So um, I don't know, but maybe people can try and grow. Uh, but, but that's what my experience. I have grown cardamom before, and um, it was not the same experience in growing in Central Park where it was not hot and humid versus the Southern India where all the spices actually grow so nice and it, it thrives. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder if, uh, who has a dehydrator? I wonder if that kind Me. of a can come into play. Hey. I got a big one. I feel like you'd need the opposite based on what Manali just described. You'd need a, a super humid greenhouse maybe. Yeah. 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 Super humid and hot. Yeah. Maybe a sauna would work. <laughs> yeah. We've got the hot part figured out. I, th I think the heat's probably okay, but it's definitely a dry heat. Yeah. I, I only I wondered about that because just with like a Google search um, to uh, put them out to dry in the sun, they might bleach and then you lose the green color. So there's like definitely a science to explore as we, you know, um, troubleshoot sourcing locally and making our own stuff. So I think um, all of all of the considerations will just stumble and learn as we go and show the love, knowledge that we can as we're developing our own um, mm -hmm. sustainable way to enjoy tea at home. Um, I. I lose track of the type of herbs that my family grows, but one of the most low-key, super easy teas is lemongrass. I just take my little scissors, I walk out there, snip, 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 give it a haircut, put it in boiling water, and man, it's perfect. <laughs> so um, question for everybody, do you have like a go-to easy peasy tea for anyone who wants to start? Peppermint. That's so easy, yes. Yeah, some tea. <laughs> right, <laughs> and yeah. My favorite on the lemony flavor is lemon verbena. I make that into a sun tea. It is so lovely. Just easy. Throw some ice cubes in it, maybe a couple berries. So lovely. Yeah, yeah the my go-to is actually, uh, oh, sorry, Alicia. No, 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 go ahead before I switch the topic. <laughs> oh, yeah, my favorite, um, kind of jumping on the, the no caffeine uh, wagon here as well, because I think that's probably a common misconception. Like, there's plenty of tea options that don't have caffeine in them. Um, but I'm a big fan. I actually just mix uh, ginger and chamomile. Ah, that's nice. Uh, and uh, bonus for anyone that's over 21, great if you fortify that with some bourbon. Uh, <laughs> it's called a hot toddy. I'm not, <laughs> I didn't make that up. <laughs> that's like a legit thing. Um, throw some lemon in there. But uh, it's, uh, someone earlier was talking about uh, the benefits of ginger. It is super accessible and you can buy it fresh, pretty cheap. 
Um, and I just stick it in the freezer and then break off chunks um, to, to make into tea with chamomile uh, just as needed. So I'd recommend that too for anyone that's looking for no caffeine, um, but wants to stay as like close to direct from nature as possible. You can buy that route pretty much anywhere. Um, and the chamomile is just flowers. You can buy those in bulk at a lot of places as well. Um, one fun thing yep. that I'll suggest adding into your blends is uh, black peppers. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so. fresh, fresh black peppers, just hand pound them or, you know, hand crush them. The, the taste is very different than um, you add the already, you know, market uh, bought uh, black pepper powder. So you will see the difference yourself. Yeah. Gonna add some black pepper to this hot toddy later. <laughs> that is that name of that drink, by the way. <laughs> and just to double check, we're talking about the peppercorns, right? The little balls, not the chilies. Cause I was like, are we, are we making um, like a salsa? Cause I just <laughs> double check. <laughs> yes, the peppercorns. Yeah. Always fresh ground is best. Um, <laughs> hey, the the go to when you're feeling sick. Um, what is it? I think we can all kind of vote, and they might end up being the same ingredients. But put that in your mind. And um, my guess is that ginger is on that list. Maybe turmeric. Yes. And maybe, um, okay, so it's not tea, but definitely lemon. But does anyone tea uh, make tea with leaves of the lemon plant? Mm -mm. Yes. Um, it's not kind of tea, but the leaf of the lemon or any citrus uh, plant, we usually top it up. Um, if we don't have access to lemon or any kind of uh, essential citrus flavor, um, I usually top off the leaf or just squeeze the leaf like this over my roast tea um, to get that uh, freshness or my mint tea sometimes. Um, if, if I don't have any kind of uh, you know citrus or lemon or tangy thing and I want that freshness, so you can try that. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone have any other um, warding off the the feeling unwell with the tea? The feeling of what? Oh, like when you're feeling sick. What do you? What kind of tea do you like? Peppermint. Just, I mean, you can mix peppermint leaves with just about anything, but peppermint is known to heal mm -hmm. tummy issues you know, your chest, your lungs, your breath. Um, I like to mix it with red raspberry leaf, a um, little bit of ginger, teeny tiny bit of ginger, not, not too spicy. And then a fresh squeeze of lemon juice. Um, what, what about the floral type of teas? Like I started putting lavender in certain mm. blends. I was a little like overwhelmed but I love the, the smell of it in my lotions and, you know, even mixing it with like rose water and spraying it on myself instead of the artificial body stuff. Um, but what, what are the benefits of like lavender? Delicious. I feel the opposite. I'm like, it tastes like a stick. Leave it out. Oh, really? <laughs> it, I guess it would depend on what part of the plant you use. Um, both Alicia and myself, we use the lavender bloom itself. So mm -hmm. that is very floral, um, relaxing, calming, nervine. It's it's super calming. And then you again you mix it with the Tulsi, the rhodiola, and um what else is in there that's super relaxing? I'm drawing a blank right now, but um. we chamomile. Chamomile. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I was just gonna say actually because uh, we keep Tulsi keeps coming up and holy basil that there's uh it's interesting there's a few different there's a handful of different um varieties and yes. each one is extremely distinct. 
And so yeah. it's just interesting, um, even to just take, you know, the different varieties and have a side by side of, you know, green Tulsi and purple Tulsi and just see how that'll affect the flavors that you're getting. Do you remember the botanical names? Um, off the top of my head, I don't. Um, I call them green and purple, but I believe um, they're also in the Ra and Krishna. Tulsi. There we go, yes. Vanna. There it is. I only remember Vanna, but you're right, Krishna. And what was the yeah. other? Rama. Rama, Rama Tulsi yeah. has uh, like white on greenish leaf and Krishna Tulsi has the purple leaf. Yeah. Yeah. Another tea that I absolutely love and I could drink it all day, every day is chrysanthemum tea. I love to I don't chew on the chrysanthemum petals. It's, it's like gum to me. It's so uh squishy rubbery delicious yes. uh -huh. have you ever tried um the marigold tea i have not you, you should definitely try marigold? so the flower the yellow uh -huh. petals mm -hmm. um you just um cut like snip off because below it there is that bulbous part and it has seeds so you just chop off and uh, shade dry the petals of marigold mm -hmm. or if you want to brew it fresh just toss it in your cup uh, with hot water and just let it steep for five minutes and, and try it. it it gives you that freshness and mm -hmm. uh, I blended uh, my marigold with you of the turmeric and I named it as the golden sun tea oh, we, I love yeah, it. We are, yes yeah and it, it really tastes um it's, it's very different and soothing taste. Um, so whenever I get cold, I usually try those um, with my detox tea that I drink every day. That's made from cumin, coriander, fennel, and carom and ginger seeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yum, yum, yum. Yeah. yeah. I, love, I love to take all the flower parts and make tea for myself. Sure. As I told you, my subject was botany, so I keep trying various permutation and combination when it comes to tea. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I wanted to um, say that we're getting close to the end of time, not not end of time, but the, our time together. And have, um, I just want to give a shout out to Manali because you're also a business person. A shout out specifically also to Jessica because you're a business person. You've turned something that you love and you know is good for people into a way to do it formally. And I think that takes a lot of um, confidence and power. And you know, I just look for the best um, and you guys are doing really great with your business. Um, and also that the Earth Day Festival is a nonprofit organization. We have um, hopefully uh, an in-person festival planned for September, crossing fingers, if those special events will be able to be placed. Um, but this is what we can do for now as a virtual event. So please attend April 22nd. It happens to be this week. Uh, we will be doing a video collage event. The videos are actually already available on the Stockton Earth Day website. And so we put a lot of um, energy into creating these short five-ish minutes um, for sharing from experts how to be involved in um, sustainability and other types of Earth Day related activities. Because um, we have to continue the education. We can't stop just because of COVID. It's important to recognize every day's Earth Day. But Earth Day is definitely a moment when we recognize where things come from, how much we appreciate our resources and each other. Um, and so this is Earth Week. And I was glad that our workshop landed in this moment because, you know, I'm just coming out of nature. Still, you know, this is a... <laughs> um, Remember, and if anyone else has any lasting comments to share. Thank you so, so much, Alicia. We are who we are because of you, because of people like you and who give us the platform to perfect our craft and to get to know one another and educate each other. 
thank you so very much. You and Earth Day, um, it, it's the epitome of who we are. Thank you. And thank all of you for sharing your ideas, your thoughts, your teas with all of us. And um, thank you, Elazar, for bringing your tea into this world. It is delicious. I can't find anything that beats it right now. It is on the right. top of the list. Um, and so I definitely want to- credit to my mom, really. <laughs> <laughs> credit to my mama. Yeah. <laughs> Elazar's mama, what's her name? <laughs> Michelle. <Thank you>. Michelle. <laughs> uh. Um, again, thank you so much. And everything that you also do for the community at large, the arts community, all of us entrepreneurs, um, we definitely appreciate your guidance and support because um, Hatch is a space that gives us a foundation to meet and collaborate and innovate. And so that's very special. Thank you all. Thank you all. Hope you enjoyed the tea. I did. Thank you all. Manali, it's a pleasure to see you. Alicia, appreciate you. Jessica. Um, cheers. Is that a good last word? Cheers. Yep, cheers. <laughs> Until next time. Um, thank you so much for joining our chai workshop and we will be sharing this video recorded up on our YouTube channel shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.